What's good, YouTube? It's your girl, Selena, and I am back with another video. If you guys are new to this channel, please do me a huge favor and subscribe to this channel. Turn on your post notifications so you can be notified the next time I post another video. Give this video a big thumbs up <laughs> and leave a comment down below if you guys want to get shouted out in my next video. Today, you guys, I have for you another cooking vlog. Um... As you guys, if you guys already watched the video that I did the other day with me making my Asian marinade, then you already know that your girl has been getting in touch with the Asian side of the food and like different flavors and stuff like that. So today, you guys, I'm going to try and attempt to make for the first time ever beef and broccoli Asian style. So I wanted you guys to come ahead and come with me and watch me attempt to make this and wish me luck you guys i'm not um like scared or anything maybe just a little but um from the last couple of days since i've been making chinese asian food i did make sesame chicken and i made bo mein noodles and i made wonton soup I gotta tell y'all about that wonton soup because i did a little cut a i cut a corner with the wonton soup but i'll tell you guys about that another time but yeah so i've been making little stuff and that's what i'm gonna do today so beef and broccoli you guys is not authentic chinese food okay it is american made chinese dish okay it's not something that i learned from that you would go to china and go order some beef and broccoli they might make you it but it's not like chinese oriented authentic do you guys understand what I'm saying? Okay, it's American made up. All right, so we're about to do the marinade, you guys. Um, we're gonna marinate this for about 15 to 20 minutes. I know we're supposed to marinate it a little bit longer, but we're just gonna do it for 15 to 20 minutes. If you want, you can marinate this, the meat for 45 minutes. You can marinate the meat for, for an hour. You can marinate the meat overnight. You can do it however long as you want. You can marinate it for 15 to 20 minutes if you would like. Marinate the meat, okay, you guys? All right, so let's get into it. Okay, so first I'm going to show you guys the marinade, the stuff that we're going to use to marinate. I forgot the sesame oil. Give me one second. Okay, so I'm going to show you guys the stuff that we are going to marinate this in. So we're gonna use some baking soda to tenderize the meat. Cornstarch to help with the uh, browning process of the meat. Yes, this is going in as a marinade. We're gonna use some ground ginger, some paprika, and these are my own little twists added to it from me watching a couple of videos over the last couple of days. Picking and fig figuring out what are some things that I think I would like in mine. So just, you know, bear with me. Adobo. Lovely Mimi puts adobo in her, so I'm just going to put a little bit in mine. Soy sauce. I have less sodium soy sauce. I heard this wasn't a really good brand. I heard the Panda brand was a better brand to use, but this is what I have, so this is what we're going to use for now. Crushed red peppers, black pepper, garlic powder, rice vinegar. We're going to use some grated ginger. I like using this, putting this in all my dishes that I've been making in the last couple of days. Pear sesame oil. This, from doing my research, I found out that this is the best brand to go in um there when you make asian dishes so these are all the seasonings and stuff that we're going to use as our marinade okay all right so first what we're going to do is we're going to cut the meat we're going to cut um our meat what i got is boneless um chuck rolls sirloin top royal steak red meat that's what i got so we're gonna cut this as thin as we can. We're supposed to cut it going against the grain to give it nice slices. So that's what I'm trying to do. Slice this up, all of it. 
if some of them are too big, you can cut them in half. I don't want them too big and I don't want them too too long, I mean, and I don't want them too short. I'm going to leave the fat pieces whole like this because I really don't like the fat, but I am going to use it as flavor. So we're cutting this as thin as we can. So I'm going to put this in a time lapse. Okay guys, so now that I'm done cutting all my meat, I put all my meat into a small, um, like one of these Tupperware bowls. So when I marinate, I could put the lid on it and put it in the refrigerator. So I just put all my meat and transferred it into here and washed my hands. I did all of that off camera. Now we're going to add our seasonings. We're gonna put some ground ginger. Paprika, some adobo, just a little bit. We're gonna put some crushed red pepper. Some black pepper. Some of the, some people used white ground pepper when I watched the videos, but this is what I had, so this is what I'm using, black pepper. Garlic powder. Lots of garlic powder. We're gonna use a teaspoon of grated ginger. I don't know, my camera cut off. I don't know how much that caught, but I just had to say it again. A teaspoon of grated ginger. Somebody must have been trying to call and I didn't notice. A teaspoon of rice vinegar. Make sure you guys get the one that says unseasoned. A teaspoon of pure sesame oil. We're going to add a fourth of a cup of soy sauce. Because it's supposed to cover it. Fourth cup of soy sauce. Boom. In there. We're supposed to put half a teaspoon of baking soda, you guys. cornstarch with this and then mix it all together but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mix the flavors first and then go back and add, add the cornstarch and then mix it again together so that's what I'm gonna do mix this seasonings first just like this I'm only using one hand to mix it because I got to use the other hand to turn the sink on to wash my hands after.
And now we're gonna add one teaspoon of cornstarch. Maybe a teaspoon and a half because there's a lot of meat in there. All right, so now we gotta mix this and get all the meat coated with the cornstarch. This is gonna help it create a, a like a thickness. If you feel like you need to add more to the meat cornstarch, then add more. It depends on how much meat you have. I don't remember how many pounds of um, meat this is. I'll tell you after. I think I'm gonna add a little bit more cornstarch. Two tablespoons, two teaspoons of cornstarch I added to mine. Mix this up really good, really, really good. Now I'm going to wash my hands, put a lid over this, put it in the refrigerator for 15 to 20 minutes, let it marinate in the refrigerator on the bottom shelf, and then we'll come back to the video. Okay guys, so now that my uh, meat is in the refrigerator marinating, we are going to cut up this broccoli and get it prepared. I'm gonna cut the bottom off. I'm gonna throw that out. All right, we're gonna cut these into like decent size pieces okay so about that big I'm gonna keep them I'm gonna put them in this little pot thing in the sink so I can wash them off again I already washed them before I started cutting them but I'm gonna wash them again a second time after I'm done cutting them to give them a thorough wash to make sure like I got everything off of it. So we're just gonna cut this up. I'm gonna put this in a time lapse. And I just want to make sure like I got them really clean. So I'm just going to give them a quick bath in the sink. Nice and clean. Okay, now I'm gonna cut up some extra um, vegetables for flavor. When I watched um, other people make this, like since I've been learning the last couple days, I didn't see them put this in here, but I felt like I wanted to because I think it would add extra flavor. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna add half a red pepper I'm gonna transfer them over to another plate. Now I'm gonna cut up some um, Vidalia onion for sweetness, extra flavor. Who doesn't like extra flavor in their food? And 
And since this is American made uh, Chinese food, why not put our own little twist on it and add some extra flavor? Like, why not? Since there's no real way to make this. Okay, that's all cut up. I'm gonna add that to the plate with the green peppers. I mean, with the red peppers. And then we're gonna use some green scallions for flavor and garnish as well. I'm gonna get these cut up. So now all my veggies are all cut up and put onto a plate. I have my red peppers, my Vidalia onions, and my green scallions. We're going to continue to let the meat marinate and then we'll be back. Okay guys, now it's time to start my broccoli. What I have here is a large pot of water boiling hot and ready to go. I'm going to add my broccoli. You guys, the broccoli is supposed to take really quickly really really quickly okay it's supposed to take about a minute we're supposed to boil this for about a minute just so it can get the color but not too soggy because we want it to keep a crunch so we're going to let that cook for one minute and then we're going to i'm going to make my um large pot filled with cold water and ice because as soon as the broccoli is done we're going to remove it out of the pot and blanch it i believe it's called yeah we're gonna blanch it in the pot of cold water to stop the cooking process okay so i'm gonna fill this up with water and ice and i'll be right back okay guys so we're gonna start the sauce for the beef and broccoli while uh, my broccoli is cooking real quick um uh, first we're gonna start out with the panda brand oyster sauce this is supposed to add sweetness and thickness to it That one, that one is gone, so I had to get, that one is gone, so I had to get another one. So I would say this is about a fourth of a cup of oyster sauce. We're going to add some chicken bouillon. I put a teaspoon and then added just a very little bit of water, enough to like get it like mixed in there. We're going to add that. We're gonna add a teaspoon of pure sesame oil to the sauce. We're gonna drizzle in some soy sauce in there. Just a little bit. Um, we're Okay, so what I'm gonna put in this is I'm gonna use balsamic vinegar. Um, some people use cooking wine, some people use um, sherry, for it the whole point is to tenderize the meat so if you don't have any cooking wine balsamic vinegar would do ginger ale would do cranberry juice would do um just anything with a high acidity level in it lemons would work anything that you could use to um basically tenderize the meat even more and basically add an acidic flavor to the sauce we're gonna add some garlic powder and then we're just going to and now we're going to mix this all together. I got to add some cornstarch. And I'm going to add two teaspoons of cornstarch. And we're going to mix that all together. See? I'm going to mix this up. Okay. 
Okay, so this is what it's gonna look like once it's all mixed up. We're gonna set this to the side, and now we're going to remove our broccoli. Gonna put it in here in the water, ice cold water. I did have ice in here at one point, but all the ice ended up melting. So just make sure that your large bowl is full of ice. Either way, because the water is cold, it's still gonna stop the cooking process. It's basically to get the heat off of it. I had a whole ice cube tray of um, ice in here and it, it melted. My apartment is really warm in here. All right, so that's gonna stay in there and it's gonna stop cooking. I'm gonna empty this water out of this pot because we're gonna use the same pot, um, large non-stick pot to do the meat. You can use a wok, you can use a large non-stick frying pan, you can use whatever you have. I happen to have this. Um, I don't like to wash a whole bunch of dishes. So we're gonna do this and make this easy and simple. Okay, so we're gonna let my pot heat up. We're gonna let it reach a high point and then we're gonna add oil. Okay guys, so now that my pot is extra hot, I'm gonna go ahead and drizzle some vegetable oil in the pot. You guys, do not use sesame oil to stir fry this, okay? Sesame oil burns, and it does not reach a high enough temperature to be able to stir fry this. Okay, so the whole point of cooking with a wok, let me tell you guys, what I've learned, just in case you feel bad if you don't have a wok and you feel like you need to go out and get one, you can go out and get one, but if you don't have one, do not stress yourself. If this is something that you just wanna make, just to make it and maybe let's say you don't have the money to go get a wok and you only have these type of ingredients in your house and you want to like make the best of it like affordable or whatever just like quick and easy and you don't have a wok use a large non-stick pan pot whatever the whole point of a wok is to keep it from um sticking and so that the wok reaches a certain temperature without burning Okay, so a wok is made to be able to reach up to 400 degrees Fahrenheit in heat. But as long as you use a nonstick pot and just put the heat up high and you just keep moving, you'll be fine. Okay? Okay, so just remember that. Show you guys. So it's cooking. We're gonna try to give them all some space and let them all do their thing. Okay? We are going to let this cook, you guys. We're gonna do this medium well. Okay? So we're gonna cook this for about three to four minutes on each side, okay? Now, what I've learned is that when you go to a Chinese restaurant, they make the meat. This is, let me tell you guys, I'm gonna put y'all on real quick, okay? So since I've been making Asian Chinese food or whatever, I've been trying to learn their different techniques and trying to figure out what is it that they do in the Chinese restaurants, okay? And what can I do different in the house so that people feel like they're getting something good without feeling like they're going to take, get takeout, like, as, as weird as it sound. Okay, so let me, let me, let me explain what I really actually mean. So you know when you go to a Chinese restaurant and you feel really sick after sometimes? or you feel like really nauseous, or sometimes you might get food poisoning or something like that. So a lot of them cook the meat just until, like their chicken and their meat, until it reaches the temperature that, you know, it's supposed to be done. Like say chicken, 
they cook it till it's 165 degrees and that's why the chicken is so tender and you guys are out there trying to wonder and guess if it's a mouse or not because how the heck do they get chicken so tender? And it's because they only cook it to a certain amount of time to reach its temperature to say that it's done. So when I made my chicken mo mein and my, um, basically my chicken mo mein the other day, I made sure I cooked it to my liking, okay? If you wanna cook it to 165 degrees and that tells you that it's done, then go ahead and do that. But if you're not comfortable with that and you feel like you're gonna get sick or you feel like you're gonna get food poisoning or you just don't like it like that, go ahead and cook your meat a little bit longer and cook it to your liking, okay? That is something that I learned. Excuse my vent in the background, okay? So same thing with the with the uh, beef lo mein or beef and broccoli. They only cook it until it's medium well. Okay, medium well. No, medium rare, I'm sorry, not medium well. They cook it until it's medium rare. I don't like mine like that, okay? I want mine's medium well. So I want mine to have a little bit of pink inside, but not too pink, okay? I don't want my beef still moving. Okay, I don't wanna be feeling like something's about to go down my body still moving, okay? I want it medium well. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to cook my beef till four minutes on each side, roughly. And then we're going to check it and see if it's medium well. And then we're going to add our sauce and then the broccoli. I got to um, take the meat out, a little bit of meat out on the side for my girlfriend because she don't eat broccoli. And then add the broccoli in after. So we're just gonna wait until our meat is medium well and then yeah, we'll be back. Okay guys, so it's almost done. The meat is almost done to my liking. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add half of those green scallions that I chopped up earlier. I'm gonna add all my red peppers that I cut up earlier and my onions. Like I said earlier, uh, the videos that I watched earlier trying to learn how to make this did not have this stuff in it, but I'm adding it because I want to. I want that extra flavor in it. Okay, I'm gonna give that a good stir and let that cook for a minute and then we're gonna add our sauce. Okay guys, it's time to add our sauce. We're just gonna give it a quick mix real quick just because the corn starts likes to settle. We're gonna go ahead and whisk that, pork it, whatever you wanna call it, mix it all up real quick. And then we're gonna go ahead and add this to our pot. All of that. And we're gonna give that a mix. Okay, so I was stirring it and now I took out some of the meat and put it to the side for my girlfriend because she doesn't like broccoli and there's enough for me and Alila in here and now I'm going to go ahead and add the broccoli in mix that up mix it all together and then make our plate okay we're going to mix that all up Mix it really good. Get it all mixed up. Look how beautiful that looks. Nice and colorful. Pretty. Delicious. Okay guys, so the food is finally done. I uh, made my plate and I wanted to show you guys the finished product. I added some, I added some cilantro to the top for garnish of my rice. I added some cilantro on here, some the rest of the, some of the green scallions as decorations. And then I went ahead and added some sesame seeds there is the finished product you guys beef and broccoli with white rice 
tell me that don't look good give me a thumbs up if you think this looks good okay guys so now there's only one thing left to do my favorite part taste test taste test i'm gonna taste this meat ready thank you god for this food blessing and purify it thank you god for all the blessings we received today in jesus name amen let's give this a try mmm mmm This is better than your normal takeout. Okay. Y'all gotta try this. This has so much flavor. So savory. Sweetness from the oyster sauce. Meat is nice and tender. Not too dry. Not too, um... I don't like my meat. Like I said, still moving. Okay. Delicious. This is delicious. I can't wait till um, my girlfriend comes back from doing DoorDash so she can try it. This is amazing. You guys got to try this. I'm about to mess this food up. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you guys like this video, please give it a big thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you're new. Turn on your post notifications so you can be notified the next time I post another video. And leave a comment down below, you guys. I'm about to go and mess this pool up. Till next time. Peace, love, and grace. Till next time, guys. Peace out. Bye.